Good morning. It is Wednesday, April 8th, 2020. I believe it's day 20, what, three of the quarantine, the stay at home order. Uh, I am Scott Davis with TechWise Group. Just wanted to come talk to you a little bit about securing your work from home and taking all the different articles that you've probably read and just making them common sense, uh, trying to make sense of what's going on. Uh, so some of the common things that you read about that really aren't going to matter too, too much is, you know, your firewall, um, Comcast, Verizon, Fios, Time Warner, Spectrum, you know, they give you a router uh, that has firewall functionality. It's not an enterprise grade device. Uh, updates are done typically by them because you're renting the device. So there's not really anything, you know, to update per se as far as firmware goes. And when there is a security update, it's pushed by the carrier. Uh, IoT devices, you know, your your thermometer, your uh, light bulbs, uh, your Roomba, you know, robot vacuum, you know, these are all devices that connect to your Wi-Fi network. And when there's an update for them, it pops up on the app and says, hey, there's an update, update my firmware. Just try to go into the apps once a month and make sure there's no updates uh, to do. And if you do, push it out. IoT devices, you know, traditionally are very insecure because there's no regulations behind, you know, what type of security they need to have in place. And there's just so many of them coming to market as the whole home, you know, automation aspect has evolved as quickly as it has. Um, you know, if you're looking to be ultra secure, you know, that's when I'm, that'd be a completely different conversation of, you know, getting a, a firewall that's actually a firewall in your office, in, in your house, um, breaking out all of your IoT devices onto its own network that don't have access to your other networks. And there's all sorts of things. But the reality is your IoT devices are fine. Just log in every once in a while to the mobile app and just, you know, see if there's any updates that need done. Things that you really should be doing, obviously password management, know what your passwords are, don't share passwords, don't use your password for work, for things outside of work, really have a dedicated password just for work, and it should only be used for work purposes. Uh, your computer, it should be patched, antivirus should be patched, make sure that stuff is staying updated. If you're still running Windows 7, it's no longer a compliant operating system, it is time to upgrade that computer and get a new computer. Uh, or talk to your IT team or vendor and get it upgraded. Don't share your work computer with your kids. Uh, it's easy, your kids are home from school, you're at home, hey, I need to watch a video for school, hey, here's the computer, I'm gonna go eat lunch or something. Try not to share your computer. Uh, try not to use your work computer for personal use, um, your personal use or a family member's personal use. At the end of the day, your work computer is what connects to that VPN that connects to your infrastructure that your IT team, your IT department is managing. And, you know, if, you know, Johnny the kid goes and, you know, is looking to download the latest Minecraft but downloads a malware infused version of it, that malware could go to your entire network. Uh, so just be aware of who's using the computer, how they're using it. Uh, really, you should be the only one using it and you should have smart passwords. Uh, you should never store data, uh, company data on your laptop. Again, as modern workforce has evolved so quickly with the whole COVID-19 coronavirus piece, it is very possible that you do have work data on. You should be trying to, your best to back that up. Talk to your IT department or your IT vendor on how you should be backing that up. If they don't have a plan, shoot me a, shoot, just shoot a comment underneath here or shoot me an email, scott at techwisegroup.com. I'd be more than happy to talk to you about options that TechWise Group offers. Um, so we touched on the AV, we touched on patching, we touched on VPN. Um, kids, you know, if you have kids at home and you, you want some sort of security aspect that you can give to them, consider uh, OpenDNS. OpenDNS, which uh, a couple years ago was purchased by Cisco as part of their umbrella brand, um, but OpenDNS is still there, OpenDNS.com, and has a family VIP plan. It's $20 a year, uh, and it pretty much covers all the devices in your house that you can do content filtering. So you can block categories uh, like adult material, gambling, things like that. Uh, it also gives you a, a year's worth of reporting, so you can go and see what computer accessed what websites when they accessed them. So you can actually see, are they working on homework when they should be working on homework? Um, so that is a product I've used it before. I recommend it. I use it here at home, uh, for the kids devices. 
So the last thing I want to bring up today is education because education is absolutely critical as, you know, not just when you're in the office education, but now that we're remote, education is more important because our guards are a little bit down. There's less security uh, kind of safeguards that are in place between us and the bad guy as we're working from home. But it's also there's more attacks coming and they're getting more creative because they're hitting the topics that are so newsworthy right now and you're already reading about and hearing about. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna switch screens here. <coughs> and here is an email from Zoom. Uh, it looks like a legit email, Zoom's commitment to user support business continuity. Uh, you know, you always hear, you know, the, the common things to check in a phishing email or an email is, you know, no reply at blog dash Zoom. Well, that doesn't look legit. So that probably, I'm gonna raise that up a little bit in my, in my sensory of this is probably a bad email. And then I go, you know, I, oh, you know, mouse over, do a mouse over the email. Oh, well, it's taking me to zoom.com. Zoom.com is their website, it's Zoom. So that looks legit, the mouse over works. That's a legit URL. I come down here, you know, enhancements to security, you know, privacy and security. Oh, again, zoom.us slash docs, privacy and security. That looks like the legit URL. Now it's not .com, it's .us, so there may be a question, but this is, again, this is a legit URL that's gonna take you to the Zoom page. But what I want you to see is here's the call to action. We also understand that our security has been in the news and we are dedicated to making Zoom more secure than ever before. We've enabled multi-factor authentication and requiring all users to complete a password reset to ensure your account security. So here it's telling you that you need to do something. And if I do a mouse over here, not zoom.us. For a lot of people, the first thing you do is you're doing a zoom over, you're doing a mouse over that first URL. That's legit. Okay, the rest is good. Uh, you can't just assume that one link is good and all the others are good. So look for the call of action. The one that you're likely to click is the one that you need to make sure is the valid one. Uh, and I mentioned coronavirus ones, you know, here, um, there's been documented cases in your area who has prepared a document. So here it's making it look like it's pushing a document. It's coming from world-health.org. Um, you know, whoever this Darlene Campbell is, if you're not expecting the email, it's probably phishing. It's probably not something that you want to open. It's also not an attachment. This is a link to a website. Uh, so doing that mouse over shows you it's not an attachment. It's actually a website. There's malware on the other end of it um, or a, a phishing form. Uh, here's another one. Coronavirus stimulus checks. The other popular ones I'm seeing right now are for small business owners and the unemployment compensation for self-employed uh, is completely new. And there's so much miscommunication coming from government on it that it's easy for scammers to create a legitimate looking form and pushing it out there with malware. So here you can see coronavirus stimulus checks, click here for the form to get your stimulus. Uh, the other thing is news articles. News articles has everybody going because you want to know the latest of what's going on with coronavirus. So here I can see a Texas-based company claims it's created a, a vaccine. It's coming from Bloomberg News, which is na-bloomberg.com, but I don't subscribe to Bloomberg there should be no reason Bloomberg is sending me an email. It doesn't fit kind of the mold of what I would expect it to kind of be in. Um, so I'm not really sure. The best thing to do with news articles, if you get one in email, is just open up your web browser and go straight to your news source of choice. Or if you really want to try to find this, go to Bloomberg.news. If they're sending an email with it, it's going to be on their homepage. But Ultimately, if a Texas-based company actually created a coronavirus vaccine, it would be on CNN, it would be on Fox News, it would be on ABC, CBS, Bloomberg, um, the Gar it would be everywhere because it is a big deal. So there's a lot of different things phishing. There's a lot of new things. It's not just look for misspellings and check the email account anymore. It's They're getting tricky, they're getting sneaky, and they're trying to get you to click you know when you shouldn't um just to kind of tell you you know how 
you know, scary fishing can get. Uh, you've probably heard the name GoDaddy. Uh, it's a humongous internet domain register website hosting. Uh, they actually just got hit with a uh, spam or a spear phishing attack where a spear fisher tricked a customer service employee into providing information that ultimately allowed hackers to view and modify customer records. As a result, several GoDaddy clients, including escrow.com, um, you know, were impacted. So there's a lot of different things going on. There's a lot of security things to be aware of. And security is not getting any easier. It's actually getting a lot harder right now because we're now evolving into this modern workforce and many organizations weren't ready to do it. So talk to your IT team, talk to your IT vendor. If you don't know who to talk to, again, scott at techwisegroup.com. I'd be more than happy to help you or point you in the right direction. So that's what I got for today. Have yourself a great day. Happy Wednesday, and I'll see everybody tomorrow.